How many of you have ever bowed? I mean, literally went down and bowed before the Lord. Just bow. Well, I want to show you the power and the significance of that. My topic is the beauty of bowing. I want to show you two sides, the negative and the positive side of bowing. What not to bow to. And what you should be bowing to. For example, when Peter told by the angel, go down to Cornelius' house. He went down there and as he was entering the house, Cornelius went and grabbed his feet and bowed before him. And Peter lifted him up and said, hey, I am a man like yourself. Do not bow to me. There is somebody greater that you will have to bow to. The first thing is, do not bow to any man. No matter what title they carry, apostle, prophet, this and that, five-star general, do not bow to any man except the man Christ Jesus. And so to continue with the negative, do not bow, I have to take you to, to a famous story, Daniel chapter 3, and I'm, I'm sure you know the story well. It's, it's about the three Hebrew boys. I'll just be spot reading. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, gave a, a command that cannot be disobeyed. There is some truth, although you know the story, I want you to listen to it. Because I am going to illustrate Matthew 28, 10 that says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst. I want to demonstrate that with this story. I want to show you the power of Jesus' name and his presence. I want to also show you that his presence brings his power. And I want to show you thirdly is that when we gather in that name, we have both his power and his presence in our lives. Now, I don't have my support team, but it's okay if you can uh, help me out today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, the command was given, when you hear the music, bow. Talking about the beauty of bowing, this is the negative side. So, there were three boys, three guys. When everybody was bowing, these three guys refused to bow. And it was told to the king, hey, there are three guys here who will not bow to your image. So he himself spoke to them and said, when you hear the music, bow. Do you know how many Christians are bowing to the music of the world? Do you know how many churchgoers are bowing to the pressure that is coming from the world? And I tell you, um, the big picture is, if you do not bow, you will not burn. But pastor, if, if, if they throw them in the fire, they will burn. Well, I want to show you some things. He said, they said, we don't care, king, to answer you about this matter. We serve God. We will not serve your God. But we know the God we serve. He will deliver us. You have to take a stand. You have to decide now that you will not bow to peer pressure. 
You will not bow to the evangelist on the TV who tells you send him money and you will be blessed. You can't bow to things around you. I would admonish you that you would only bow to the man Christ Jesus. And I will show you the power of bowing to his name. Hallelujah. Now watch this. They, 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 they tied them up. And they heated the furnace seven times hotter. The way they would heat it in one is that they had um, goat skins filled with um, pitch oil, melted asphalt. And they had them in bags. So one bag tossed in the fire makes it hot, really hot. He said, put seven bags. Make it seven times hotter. So it was so hot. Now, you tell me what's going on here. When was Jesus or the angel in the fire? He had to be there before they were thrown in. Because the people who were throwing them in, when the fire backfired, they were slain. They were outside and they were slain by the fire from the pit. So Jesus or his angel was already in the fire keeping it cool. For when you are thrown, listen, God is in any fire that you are going to be thrown in. He is there before you arrive. And so when two or three were thrown into the fire, he was already in the midst. And may I say that his presence tames the fire. The fire has no power on the believer. There is the power that you carry inside of you. Let me say it like this. The fire inside of you has to be stronger than the fire outside of you. So that when you are thrown in the fire, that fire in you overcomes the fire outside. And what will kill others, you will survive. Where others will perish, you will stand and you will walk around uh, just your hands tied. But the fire only sets you free. When Jesus is in the fire, the fire becomes holy fire. And so there were times when I said, Lord, you know, I, I don't want to preach. Give the other guys a preach. And I would stay away from the pulpit for two or three months. And then like Jeremiah, something would start to bubble inside of me. And I couldn't hold it back anymore. And Jeremiah said, Lord, I'm not prophesying to the stiff-necked people. I'm not. I'm getting in trouble for speaking the truth. And then he said, oh God, thy word is like a fire shut up in my bones. I have to talk. When you have the word of God in you, that word is a holy word that brings a holy fire and you can never remain silent. You will speak before the fire, you will speak in the fire, you will speak after the fire, but you will never bow to the God of that fire. Can I hear an amen? God will make you Fireproof. You will be in there, but you'll never get hurt. He said so. The fire will come, but it will never burn you. So where two or three are gathered together, like these three Hebrew boys gathered together, you find the presence of the Lord. That's why when we come here and we gather in the name of Jesus, I guarantee you from the word that he is here. So now that he's here, 
I am wondering when you came through the door, what kind of problems came with you? What did you bring in your head? What has been the thoughts that have been milling through your mind and have worried you? You walk to the door saying, Lord, this week has been a real rotten week. I have had so many things to think about and to worry about. And so, not yet, brother. Not yet. I'll call you. I'll call you. <laughs> what are you carrying on your head? What worries? What burdens? What frightening thoughts? What are the what ifs that you have about tomorrow? What if I lose my job? What if my child gets hurt? What if my marriage breaks up? The many what ifs that have been circling in your head, giving you mental oppression, sleepless nights, and waking up worrier, more worried than the night you went to bed. You bring your worry into the day and you come here with your worry. I have news for you. You will leave without a worry when you learn how to bow before Jesus Christ. And that's where the illustration is going to come in. So the negative side is don't bow to men. Don't bow to the music of the world. And don't bow to the political pressure that tells you you have to do what the government says. Because the king is political here. He's the government. And I will disobey any government law that will not sanction the word of God. If they tell me I can't preach here and I won't be able to hold service here, I will defy that. Because I serve a God that's bigger and more powerful than any agency in this world. I can rebel when the time has come to rebel for a righteous cause. They couldn't shut up the apostles. They couldn't keep that fire down, the fire of Pentecost. So... The angel is already in the fire waiting for you, preserving you when you get there. His presence makes the fire holy, and you no harm will come to you. Only your bonds will be loose, and you will be free to walk in the furnace. <laughs> the good thing is, you can't see it, but the onlookers will say, wait a minute, we threw three guys in there. How come we see four? And the king said, the fourth is like unto the Son of God. I guarantee you, no matter where you go, the presence of God will always be with you. Behold, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, especially in your time of trouble. God will not run out on you. Be comforted that his presence is always there. So that's the negative side of bowing. Let's go to the positive side. You can throw up that scripture, Philippians 2, 8 and 11. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, help me. <laughs> Philippians 2, 8. Let's take 9. Wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in three dimensions. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things beneath the earth. 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's look at that. The name Jesus was not given by a man. God said to Gabriel, tell Mary to call his name Jesus. God had given him that name. And because the name originated in the heart of God, it has so much power that I want to show you that we take for granted. God had highly exalted him. And I want you to see this. Far above, according to Ephesians 1, 19, 23, God had exalted him far above. Let me read that. Which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far, far above all principality and all power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. And has put all things under his feet and give him to be head over all things of church, which is body. Understand what happened here. When God exalted Jesus far above now the principalities and powers, they are the rulers of this world. They are spiritual forces that we fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Uh, Okoye is really called a principality. It's an area uh, where they dominate, and these forces rule. They rule principalities. They rule townships. They rule counties. They rule govern uh, nations. They take on over the governments. These are the powers that are here, but God can highly exalt him. Way, say with me, way up above all principality and power that demons are subject to that name. I want to show you that point. When he went to Gadara and this man was possessed by a legion, which is about 6,000 in the Roman army. So many demons and they, they said, I want you to get this if you get nothing so that you may be more empowered to use the name. Jesus, the Son of God, are you come to torment us before our time? I am, that's enough for me to tell you that the presence of Jesus torments devils. Just his presence. They are uncomfortable. They are in misery. And when I discover that truth, I know the enemy has tormented me many times. I say, okay, it's my time. Demons, I torment you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Demon, I frustrate your plans. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because demons are afraid of the name. Devils believe and tremble. They shiver at the mention of his name. But why? Why we use the name so casually and nothing happens? It's because we have not really investigated the name of Jesus. Let's do that now. At Gate Beautiful, this beggar for all his life, lame from his mother's womb, biological cripple. He was begging at the gate. Looking at Peter, and James and John, please give this poor man something. Well, Peter said, Silver and gold 
I don't have. But such as I have, I possess this. Such as I have, I am going to give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. He got up immediately and he began to dance and jump and his ankle bones received strength. They were all astonished and they marveled. And Peter said, why look you upon us as if we had made this man to walk? He explained, why this miracle took place because we had faith in the name. This man is walking because we had faith in the name. Why? In the name there is power. Throw that slide up there for me. Say it with me. In the name of Jesus, invested in that name is the supernaturalness of God. Invested in that name is the dunamis, the dynamite of God. When you use the name, it's not an ordinary name. It's not Jesus. It's Jesus the Christ. A name given by God and a name honored by God. And wherever that name is used in faith, a miracle must happen. There is power in the name of Jesus. I join uh, Martha Munuzi who sings, say the name. <laughs> say the name. All you have to do is just say the name. And everything in heaven bows to that name. Angels bow. Everything beneath the earth, the gates of Sheol and Hades, the watchmen of the underground, when on the day, Saturday, after the crucifixion, oh, Psalms 24 and 25 rumbles the truth and says, hey guys, you authorities of hell on the underground, the king of glory is coming in. I said, who is the king of glory? And they said, the Lord God Almighty. He is the king of glory. And he went down there and he snatched the keys of death and hell, Ephesians 4. And God had highly exalted him and then authorized his name with heaven's power. It's not an ordinary name. And should not be used frivolously. It should be used consciously that you are evoking heaven's best. All the might and power that is in Jesus' name uh, that God has, has been invested in the name of Jesus. And all satanic powers must bow to that name. As the man at the gate beautiful Healing is in that name. Disease must bow to that name. Financial loss must be bow to that name. Any sickness in the human body must bow to that name. Faith in that name wins. Faith in that name conquers. I know it's a simple sermon, but I want you to understand when you use the name of Jesus, it's not a simple matter. Don't bow to the world. God will make you fireproof. You will be there in the fire and he is with you. Don't bow to the music of the world. Don't bow to the philosophy of, 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 of social media. They will lead you astray. Follow the word of God. Stay close to the Lord. Make him your best friend. And love the Lord, your God with all of your heart. Amen. Amen. So I showed you the negative and the positive side of bowing. I showed you that angels, demons, and men must bow. And I ask you the question, what 
is on your head when you came to church. The beauty of bowing, and I want to show you that. You can laugh, it's okay, it's a humorous one. Show you how some of you came to church. You see, you can't see it spiritually. But when you came in, there was a weight on your head. This one says, fear. Very fearful. You don't know how the day is going to end up. This one says, worries. You've been carrying worry on your head. Which one this is? No time. You don't have time. Where are all the people that who should be here today? So, you don't have time. You don't know where to get more time. So, time is a problem. You, you, you add as you go along the week. What are you going to add on me again? Oh, surgery. You have a surgery coming up. And that's really worrying you. You don't know what, what's going to happen. What the doctor is going to say. You, you have a test to do and you don't know what the result is. Oh, this is just some more chains to tie you up. Worries. More worries. This, this guy is loading me up. This is an empty bottle. Some of you worry for nothing. <laughs> nothing. You have nothing, but you're carrying the worries. Dental woes. Dental woes. Family crisis. Family crisis. Credit, card. Credit card interest soaring high. Past rent, past due. Mortgage not paid for two months. Job insecurity. Bank account zero. Add them. Addiction. Spouse unfaithful. Children rebelling. All those things keep piling up on your head. You are more worries to me? You want to put the whole bag? In case you want to fix it yourself. When you recognize, I want you to watch this. You walk all week around with a load on your head. The beauty of bowing to the foot of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bow before you. When you bow, you unload. If you don't bow, you will burn, you will break. And that's the beauty of bowing. May you never forget this illustration. As the enemy adds every day worries to you, every night you bow. And so I'm going to bow, if you wish. Lord, I bow. I bow before you. Why? Because I am nothing. I have nothing. I can do nothing. I confess you are my Lord. You are my King. You are my everything. I bow to you. I humble myself before you. You said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you at the right time. 
Please accept my humility, Lord, and my bowing before you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.